The Zapruder film, the most telling piece of evidence in the assassination of John F. Kennedy. Hard copy has obtained the complete, rarely seen 8mm film taken curbside that cold Dallas afternoon. Experts have debated it for years. Now you examine the evidence and decide for yourself. JFK, the final frames. This is hard copy for Thursday, November 21st, 1991. Hello and welcome, I'm Perry Nolan. And I'm Terry Murphy. Good evening. These are excerpts from the about-to-be-released Oliver Stone movie on the John Kennedy assassination. I saw a flash of light in bushes and that last shot. Hollywood is about to stamp its vote on the conspiracy theory with this $40 million epic starring Kevin Costner. It's bound to leave an indelible impression on more people than any assassination book ever written. Sensitive territory for young minds that haven't read the books or experienced the range of assassination theories. So tonight, we've gone back to the original, breathtaking filmed evidence of what really happened that day Camelot died in a Dallas motorcade. Within the span of less than six seconds on a sunny November afternoon in Dallas, President John F. Kennedy was struck by two bullets. The second shot was a fatal head wound that destroyed a sizable portion of the president's skull. It was captured on 8mm film by Abraham Zapruder, a Dallas businessman who thought he was recording souvenir footage of a presidential visit to Texas. Something has happened in the motorcade route. Something, I repeat, has happened in the motorcade route. You see Mrs. Kennedy's pink suit. There's a Secret Service man spread eagle over the top of the car. We understand Governor and Mrs. Connolly are in the car with President and Mrs. Kennedy. We can't see who has been hit, if anybody's been hit, but apparently something is wrong here. Something is terribly wrong. Within an hour and a half of the assassination, Lee Harvey Oswald was arrested for the president's murder and the murder of a Dallas policeman named J.D. Tippett. Rifle. Purchase. Did you kill the president? No, I've not been charged with that. In fact, nobody has said that to me yet. Uh, the first thing I heard about it was when the newspaper reporters in the hall uh, asked me that question. Do you have anything to say in your defense? On Sunday morning, November 24th, on live television, Lee Harvey Oswald was shot by Jack Ruby, a nightclub owner with mob connections. Oswald died at 1.07 p.m. The events of that weekend, 28 years ago, still have impact today. On magazine covers, at an assassination convention in Dallas, and in Oliver Stone's Christmas movie, JFK. It goes into the new material that we've uncovered in the 1970s, 80s. And so really what the movie is turning out to be is a jigsaw of about 30 years of research. Oliver Stone's take on the assassination centers on the theories of this man, Jim Garrison, a New Orleans attorney who charged conspiracy. Garrison was discredited. But to a new audience, he'll have the authority of Kevin Costner. Nothing is going to keep me from going ahead with my investigation of John Kennedy's murder. Stone's movie discounts the single gunman theory. But what does the Zapruder film show? That footage is the scientific clock of the assassination of President Kennedy. But even so, experts, or so-called experts, would see in the frames of the Zapruder film things that stir controversy, even as Oliver Stone edits his movie. The smoke came from behind the hedge. The Warren Commission gave us the official version that Oswald was the lone assassin. There was no evidence of conspiracy. But many found the official conclusions unbelievable. The magic bullet that had to strike President Kennedy and Governor Connolly. A bullet that was found on a hospital stretcher. A bullet that looked almost as pristine as the day it was manufactured. And that wasn't all. The Zapruder film appeared to contradict the theory of a single assassin. The fatal bullet appeared to be coming from the front. It's prompted many to believe that someone else fired the fatal shot. David S. Lifton has been obsessed by that conclusion since 1964. Those frames from the Zapruder film, which appear to show President Kennedy's head moving backwards after the fatal shot, that backward motion really bothered me as a physics major. In fact, I found it impossible to believe that the shot could have come from the back if Kennedy's head was thrust backwards. Based on his research and his eyewitness interviews, David Lifton decided that the president's head wounds had somehow been surgically altered to implicate Oswald. 
and he found that when the president's body arrived at Bethesda Naval Hospital from Dallas, the brain was missing as well. And I'm saying to you that since the body was always in the custody of Secret Service agents and a Navy Rear Admiral, this plot to murder President Kennedy and to uh, alter the direction of the shots and to frame Lee Harvey Oswald goes to the top of our government. That basically mirrors Oliver Stone and Jim Garrison, the theory that Oswald was not the lone gunman. Nobody's going to tell me that kid did the shooting job he did from that damn bookstore. Dr. Michael Bodden is a forensic pathologist, a medical detective with an international reputation as a top expert when it comes to autopsy findings. Back in the late 1970s, he headed a forensic team for a congressional committee investigating conspiracy allegations in the JFK assassination. Now, as the president's car comes into view, it's going about 11 miles an hour and he, the president is waving and moving in his chair, in his seat. Governor Connolly's in a jump seat slightly lower in front of him. Mrs. Kennedy is to his left. Last week, at the request of hard copy, Dr. Bodden reviewed the Kennedy file and the Zapruder film. I'm well aware that a lot of people say that the body of the president was altered before the autopsy to make it appear that the shots came from the back when they really came from the front. That's nonsense. But why does the film show the president's head snap back? When people look at the Zapruder film, it appears to many that because the head goes backwards at the moment of uh, the head shot, uh, he must have been shot from the front because uh, the body goes in the direction uh, that the bullet is going. Uh, that's the Hollywood version. It's not true. Since the uh, Zapruder film, uh, unfortunately, in uh, Vietnam and other places, we have lots of people shot on film. Very commonly, when a person is shot, the body moves toward the shooter. What we see here on, in the x-ray is the bullet enters in this area and exits here over the right ear area. The brain is still in the cavity. The fact that the doctors in Texas and the doctors in Bethesda made estimates as to the size of the exit wound that are inconsistent is more a reflection of the fact that they didn't take proper measurements. They didn't shave, the hair was never shaved. The size of the wounds are rough eyeball guesses. That's not what should be done in a uh, medical legal autopsy. Despite the theories, despite the movie scripts, the answers to who shot President Kennedy are right here in this film taken by a Dallas businessman. It all depends on what you see. Mary, do you think we'll ever really know the answer? I doubt it. I think even if somebody came forward now and said I was involved in a conspiracy, a lot of people simply wouldn't believe them. And I think there's so many theories. I, I've had people write me and say, if you look carefully at that film, you will see the chauffeur, the driver, turn around and fire a handgun at the president. A lot of theories. It's a wild one.